Eden by Obsess Much. Read by S.S.J. DeBusk. Uh, don't own anything. Don't own the books. Don't own the movies. Don't own J.K. Rowling. Don't own Harry Potter. Don't own anything Harry Potter is or ever will be. Fan fiction is written by Obsess Much. You should go check it out on fanfiction.net. Oh, and please support the official release. Chapter 5 Cruel Hope Your eyes are made of glass. They break. You are not brave. You are alone like a dog in a kennel. Your hands break out of boils. Your arms are cut and bound by bands of wire. Your voice is out of there. Your voice is strange. There are no prayers here. Here there is no change. And Sexton, angels of the love affair. Hot summer, cloudless sky. Summer, the grounds of Hogwarts, filled with students relaxing in the sunshine. Move across the air. No one sees me. No one knows me. I know them. No. I know one of them. I can see Jenny by the lake. But it's not Jenny. It looks like her. She takes off her shoes, dipping her feet into the lake. Careful, the swiddle will get you. The red-headed boy sitting next to her doesn't look up from the book he's reading when he speaks. She drowns him in a mischievous smile over her shoulder. Don't be such an old woman. The boy smiles, still not looking up from his book. It's the guide to advanced transfiguration. I was making my way through that book before. Only you would study the day before school end, the girl says, rolling her eyes. Brown eyes, bigger, darker than Jenny's. He still doesn't look up from his book. Just because you don't care about Owl and Newt doesn't mean that none of us do. She tossed her hair back with a slight, petulant gesture. I think the better way. I can think of better ways to occupy my time. She grins at some passing six-year boy, earning an appreciative whistle from one of them. Oi! Leave off our sister. The good-natured shout doesn't come from the red-haired boy. It comes from the person sitting just next to him. The boy that I can't see. Fading, fading darkness. I whisper, your children. Cold, cold ice stone, the entire length of my back. My children, as they will be, or as they might have been. Beads of sweat roll down my face. I open my eyes. There is still no sunshine here. My tongue comes unstuck from the roof of my mouth. I taste slate, bitter vomit. I roll myself up, balls to fists, into my temples, trying to drive the dream out of my mind. I can't afford to dwell on fantasy. It won't allow me to hope. I w It'll only allow me to hope. It would only allow me to hope. Hope is a cruel thing. It makes you believe that things could get better. If only you tried hard enough. I used to believe that. I'm not sure whether I do now. I don't know what to believe anymore. You must have a clear conscience. You sleep like a baby. I start to see... I start at that voice. And I turn to see Lucy is standing on the other side of my smile. He's smirking at me. Smirking. I was starting to think you may never wake up. Would he have felt the tiniest bit of guilt if I hadn't? No. Not if it could do what he did when he last saw me, and not feel any remorse. Instinctively I catch 
a lock of my hair between my fingers, just to make sure that it's still there. It is, thank God. It's easier to dwell on that than the pain. I won't try and remember that. You're not very talkative today, Mudblood. He draws. What a change this makes after the first of the last few days. You have only ever seemed most eager to talk so far. Talk, yes. I've done in nothing but talk. Stupid, weak things that I am. I've given them everything they've asked for. They feel unclean. They need to wash and scrape the slime guilt off of me. How could I do it? They're all going to die. Ron, Harry, all of the weasels. All because of my stupid weakness. It might be alright. You didn't give away the borough's location. Hope. The cruel flame lights up in my chest. Once again, I recite the mantra, key to my sanity. It's alright. It's okay. It's okay. It's alright. Lucius points his wand at the ground in front of me. A small loaf of bread and a goblet of water pop out of the thin air onto the floor. Please eat. I reach for the food. My common sense and hunger overriding my pride. It doesn't take me long to finish it. I eat up every last crumb and down the water in a matter of seconds. And I'm still so hungry I could, as if I could cry. And still, I am so hungry I feel as if I could cry. That's what I meant to say. Um. When I finish my tiny excuse for a meal, I lift my eyes up and to stare at him. His smirk grows wider. I say nothing. So you're really not going to talk to me? He says eventually. How disappointing. I have so enjoyed our little chat. Do you want to know something? I asked wearily. His smile flickers slightly when I refuse to play along with him. I relish that flicker. The one amount of control I have over him, I can make him angry. And if I can't eat, then I can feed off that anger at least. The Dark Lord has asked me to take you up to the Great Hall. All of my breath seems to leave my body all at once. I was hoping I'd never have to see Voldemort again. Why? I asked, wanting to keep him talking, to put off the movement, when I have to see that, that horrible face again. Why does he want to see me? He said he didn't have the time to bother with me. Oh, please don't flatter yourself, he smirks. This meeting isn't going to be centered around you. No, he just wants to... you to be there to witness his return, which should be very soon, if all goes to plan. His return? I ask, my stomach hollow. Hmm. Hmm. He makes a s show of inspecting his nails and polishes them on his robes, creating quite a picture of nonchalance. His return from the Weasley's home. My insides shrivel up and turn themselves inside out. I try to speak, to open my mouth, and try to push words out, but none will come. He smiles, disturbing the charade. Whoopsie daisies! <laughs> disturbing the charade of indifference he is putting up. When, he, when he discovered what Potter, what, what Potter was residing with the Weaslings, he decided to pay them a visit. His voice is heavy with sadistic pleasure. He pulls words out of me, stupid, meaningless words, words that don't matter, words to stop myself from falling into the darkness of guilt. How... How does he know where they live? My dear girl, I thought you were supposed to be intelligent. He breathed a small laugh. Do you really think that we didn't trouble to find the location of Harry Potter's best friend during the last two years? Granted, you were easy to track down to the Weasleys was, but what would that ridiculous muggle phone book of yours. 
I don't understand. If you know where the Weasleys live, then why have you left them all alone this time? He rolls his eyes in pure exasperation. Why don't you try and guess? Why would you try? Why don't you try using that incredible brain of yours for a change? I swallow down on my indignation and try to keep and try to think of the situation logically. Logically, <laughs> you wanted to keep them alive in case you might need to use them to get to Harry. Lucia's smile widened. Very good. He glows, smirking to stretch so wide I'm surprised it doesn't spill, <laughs> split his face in half. I have to say, it's rare, so rare, to find someone of your background with a bit of, of a bit of basic intelligence. You can't just assume that because more, someone is a muggle born it automatically makes them stupid. Oh, but that's, oh, but it's an assumption that has so much substantial amount of evidence to back it up. His grin disappears. You only have to look at a muggle world to realize their infinite stupidity. Desperately numbering, numbing their minds with the ridiculous technology of theirs, forever pushing the boundaries of the universe to breaking point, never considering that some things are better left alone. So adamant that progress should be made only for its own sake. But you can't hold progress, I say sharply. Things have to change. That's the only way we can evolve as a species. He raises his wand, and the sting spreads through across my cheek. I swallow down the bile that rises in my throat. Imbecile, every one of them! He goes on, ignoring me completely. Unappreciative of culture and scornful of intel intelligence. It is any wonder the freaks like you come into our world, trying to leave your own behind. Although I want to reply to him, I clamp my mouth shut, not wanting to provo provoke him any further. He sneers at me, as if it were almost contemptuous of my sir servility now that he has it. As if he were almost contentious with the servility now that he has it, before he continues with this one-sided conversation. But I keep but I did not come here to deliberate, to debate on the matter of your inferiority. Yes, that is the reasons why you have kept the pathetic family alive, so that they may be used as a tool in the war against Potter. That was a gamble, I admit, but one that has definitely paid off, don't you think? I don't answer. I just breathe deeply, trying to control my heart which is banging so hard in my chest I f feel it's about to burst through my ribs. But the Dark Lord is not without mercy. I thought it might be a uh, pleasant for you to see your friend one last time before his execution. He'll be most briefly reunited with Potter when he's returned with the Dark Lord before he is finally disposed of. Once and for all. He coughs decidedly. You are allowed to show your gratitude. I feel tears rip through the pit of my stomach to burn under my eyelids. I can't breathe as the entire world presses down on me, suffocating, robbing me of air. I've killed Harry. I've killed him. Hot tears burst out of my eyes and roll down my cheeks. I'm Ron and Jenny and the others. What couldn't happen to them. What did you think is going to happen to them? Why?